Welcome to Demystifying Math. In this lesson, we're going to find a polynomial that represents the normal curve. We have a picture of the normal curve drawn, and the area under the curve is 1, the mean is 0, and the standard deviation is 1. The equation for the curve is e to the negative x squared over 2 divided by the square root of 2 pi. What we want to do is find a polynomial that estimates the curve. We're going to find a Maclaurin polynomial because they are centered at zero. The series representation for the polynomial is the sum of n equals zero to infinity of the nth derivative of the function evaluated at zero divided by n factorial times x to the power of n. So if we expand that out, what we will be doing is finding the function evaluated at zero and adding to that the first derivative evaluated at 0 times x plus 1 over 2 factorial r2 times the second derivative evaluated at 0 times x squared plus 1 over 3 factorial or 1 6 times the third derivative evaluated at 0 times x cubed plus 1 over 4 factorial or 1 24 times the fourth derivative evaluate at 0 times x to the 4th, and so on. So what we're going to do first is find all our coefficients. So we need to evaluate the function at 0. So we're just going to plug in a 0 for x, and that gives us 1 over the square root of 2 pi. Now we have to find our first derivative. Our only variable is the x in the exponent, so we get negative x e to the negative x squared over 2 divided by the square root of 2 pi. And if we evaluate that at 0, we get 0. To find our second derivative, we're going to use the product rule. So I'm going to break it up as u equaling negative x over the square root of 2 pi, and v is e to the negative x squared over 2. We're going to find the derivative of u and v. And then we're going to plug that into our product rule of u v prime plus v u prime. Now I see common factors. Our common factors are e to the negative x squared over 2 and the square root of 2 pi in the denominator. So if we factor that out, we're left with x squared minus 1. Now we can go ahead and evaluate that at 0 and we'll get negative 1 over the square root of 2 pi. Remember these are going to be the coefficients for our polynomial. Let's go ahead and find our next derivative. So we're going to let u equal the x squared minus 1 over the square root of 2 pi, and v be the same as we had before. And we're going to take our two derivatives. Again, plugging into the product rule, we have uv prime plus vu prime. And we're going to factor out our common factors, which are e to the negative x squared over 2, and x over the square root of 2 pi. And then we're left with x negative of x squared plus 1 plus 2, which gives us 3 minus x squared. And evaluating at 0, we get 0. Let's find our next derivative. So we're going to distribute the x first. So I have 3x minus x cubed e to the negative x squared over 2 over the square root of 2 pi. And I'll break it up in a similar way that I've done before, and then take our derivatives of u and v. Plug into the product rule, and then factor out our common factors. And we're left with, so after simplifying, x to the fourth minus 6x squared plus 3 times our e to the negative x squared over 2 all over the square root of 2 pi. Then evaluate at 0 and we get 3 over the square root of 2 pi. So you can continue taking derivatives. Um, so I found that the fifth derivative evaluated at 0 is 0. The sixth evaluated at 0 is negative 15 over square root of 2 pi. The seventh derivative gives 0. And the eighth derivative evaluated at 0 is 105 over the square root of 2 pi. So I plug that into the polynomial formula 
for the Maclaurin. So we have 1 over the square root of 2 pi. Our coefficient for the next term was 0. And we had negative 1 over the square root of 2 pi as our coefficient for the x squared. And we're dividing that by 2 factorial. Then the x cubed is 0. The next term we got 3 over the square root of 2 pi as our coefficient. And we're taking that and multiplying it by x to the 4th over 4 factorial. Our fifth coefficient was 0. Our sixth was negative 15 over the square root of 2 pi. Our seventh coefficient was 0. And the eighth was 105 over the square root of 2 pi. Notice that every other term is 0. So we can try to work with this. And we're going to simplify our coefficients. So looking at the 3 over the 4 factorial, the 3's cancel. And it can be written as 1 over 2 squared times 2 factorial. The 15 over 6 factorial, the 3 and the 5 cancel. So it can be written as 2 cubed times 3 factorial in the denominator. The 105 over 8 factorial simplifies to 1 over 2 to the 4th times 4 factorial. So that helps us with our coefficients. So that's 2 to the n times n factorial in the denominator. We're alternating in sign, so if we're starting at our sum at 0, we want it to be to the nth power for negative 1. Again, we only have alternating terms, so twice n is our exponent of x. And then, of course, you have the square root of 2 pi in your denominator. So this will allow us um, to find more terms without having to find the derivatives. So I have a few terms written out here, and I'm going to expand it a little bit. So I have 10 terms. And I just plugged into the summation formula to find them. So I took the first six terms and plugged them into the computer program and compared it to the original function. So it looks like it's pretty accurate, up to about 1.5 standard deviations from the mean. So I went all the way to the uh, x to the 18th term. And that pushed it out almost to two standard deviations, not quite accurate to two standard deviations. So what I wanted to do now is um, integrate it so that we can find the area under the curve. So I just integrated term by term of the polynomial. And I wanted to get a series representation for that. So I just followed the pattern from integrating. So you have um, negative 1 to the n, x to the 2n plus 1, to the n to the n plus 1 times n factorial over the square root of 2 pi. So again, that will allow you to take more terms if you need to. So what we want to do with these um, first nine terms is to compare um, the what the polynomial gives us for area and what the graphing calculator gives us for area. So we're going to do that next. So I typed the function into a computer program, and I'm just going to have it evaluated. Um, at certain values. So let's say that we wanted to find out what the area would be at 1.5 standard deviations. So you would evaluate the integral at 1.5 and we're going to do this between 0 and 1.5. So at 1.5 we get 0 0.3319. At 0 we would get 0. Let me go ahead and do that. Evaluating at 0, we get 0. So if I subtracted the 2, I would get, of course, 0 0.43319. So let's see what the graphing calculator does. So we're going to go to um, distribution, which is above the variables key. So second variables, normal CDF, number 2. We're going to start at 0 and go to 1.5. So 
So the ca graphing calculator gives us 0.43319. So pretty much the same as what the function is giving us. So let's go back here and do it a little bit further out. Let's evaluate the function at 2. So this would be at 2 standard deviations from the mean. So between 0 and 2 standard deviations, we got 0 0.47730. Let's go back, evaluate it using the calculator. The calculator is giving me more decimal places than the um, function, but it's pretty close. You can go out to four decimal places, that's pretty good. This is 0.47725, so it's off a little bit um, when you're at two standard deviations, but we said the graphs were a little bit different. Um, so we have that off a little bit. If we go out even further, let's do it one more time to 2.5. We get 0.49698. Let's do it on here again. We want to go to from between 0 and 2.5. And we get 0.4937. So that's off a lot. So you don't want to use um, just the first nine terms when you're going beyond two standard deviations. So it takes it takes about 25 terms to get out to three standard deviations. So if you want to just follow the series representation and take it out more terms, you can be more accurate. Okay, thank you for watching Demystifying Math.